give me fuel, give me fire, give me that which I desire. It's good enough for Metallica, it's good enough for me. But if you actually go back into the way, way back machine, you'll see that in my Flamme Rouge video that I am more of a cycling enthusiast. And I'll admit, I was resistant to the idea of picking up a car-based re-implementation of my beloved cyclist purity system. And if it weren't for my reviewer need to keep my thumb on the cardboardian pulse, a well-worn and frankly falling apart copy of Flamme Rouge and timely birthday of my home's resident nine-year-old, I might not have checked out Heat at all, which would have been my loss because it is far from just a re-theming of a classic system and is easily the best racing game I've ever played. Across four potential maps, you and fellow players are, surprise, surprise, racing for first place in a circuit usually consisting of two laps. Each turn, players can shift gears, pick cards from their hands equal to their gear, reveal then move ahead in turn order, catching some bonus movement if they're in last or their position puts them directly behind or next to another racer on account of the adrenaline from being on tilt or the slipstream from other drivers. Finally, you can discard cards from your hand, draw up to seven, shuffling your discard, including played cards if you run out of those to draw, rinse and repeat until someone wins. Except not quite. There's a deceptive surface level simplicity that conceals Heat's sophisticated and nuanced underbelly. Take corners, for instance. Every map has several points where there's a corner check with a speed limit. If your total speed for the turn, not counting slipstream, exceeds the corner limit, you add that much heat from your engine to your deck, which effectively acts as dead cards in your hand can't cover the heat, you spin out and have to move back behind the corner. This means you're always shifting up and down, balancing the cards that you play and what you want to reserve, thinking carefully and critically about your low cards just as well as your high, and most importantly, finding an equilibrium with the heat that's in your engine versus in your deck, which is such a fantastic resource system. Every turn, you can pay a heat to give a boost, flipping cards off the top of your deck until you get a standard one to four and moving those spaces. But heat clutters your deck and you use it too much and you risk spinning out and you can't use it for optional goodies like more boosts and jumping two gears in a turn instead of the normal one. So you might decide to stay in first or second gear, which has cooldown bonuses, allowing you to fork heat from your hand back into the engine. Successful racing is dependent upon good heat management and the system is fluid, intuitive, and invites deft plays and gravitas. Strategically, the game is extremely fine-tuned, and while it uses the same core system from its cycling predecessor, it manages to imbue so much explosive and cunning energy into its cardboard frame, jumping gears down to take a sharp corner, both gaining heat for going a hair too fast and killing heat for being in a low gear, only to jump back up the next turn to rocket forward feels great. And since players, for the most part, have the same deck and are just dealing with the movement between one and four per card with no dice rolls or random elements, every space you move feels crucial and earned. Non-discardable heat from your engine and stress cards shuffled into your deck during setup build up in your hand. When played, stress, like boosting, has you flip until you get a standard one through four, so you have to balance hand management taking advantage of clear stretches, knowing when to push, when to conserve, and when to risk, and it all comes together remarkably well. Well, it seems like I'm over the moon with this game, which, yeah, I am. There are some things we need to discuss. Remember how I said I got this for my kid's ninth birthday? Well, he had no prob picking it up once we got playing. He's quite the little gamer. The initial explanation of the nine phases in a round as indicated at the top of your dashboard was a lot to take in. And inevitably steps or possibilities will get missed as you forget to slipstream or add the last player bonus or clear out your heat as you learn the game. I saw a group of six sitting down with this at a recent convention and they were trying to learn it straight out of the box and all of them were just sitting around with a glazed over look in their eyes. And fortunately, I was able to step in and give them a quick teach, getting them going within, you know, about five minutes or so. But 
for what feels like essentially a rules-like game, expect that it's going to be a, a, a little bit clunky of a honeymoon. Also, this game is one to six, but with only two racers on the road, it takes away a lot of the dynamism that makes the game shine. Fortunately, there are tools in the box to automate some racers, both for solo and more crowded, lower player count games, but it's such a suspenseful, dynamic, interactive system that three or more human racers is definitely ideal. But those caveats aside, Heat lives up to the hype. It's easily my favorite Days of Wonder release since Five Tribes from 10 years ago. And in spite of my bicycle fanaticism, it's fully replaced Flamme Rouge for me. It's an exquisite design and beautiful production with lots under the surface once you get your bearings from weather conditions and the aforementioned automated racers to the outstanding garage mode where you replace the three symmetrical upgrade cards in the standard decks with drafted unique cards ranging from body upgrades to ditch stress to variable speed cards that can take corners in a pinch to four-wheel drive for huge though imprecise boosts. Heat is a fabulous, richly thematic game that has taken over my household. And my guess is that if you like racing games, you like simple but really interesting systems, or a lot of non-combative but still really aggressive interaction, it's going to be a hit in your house too. And that's our review, but let me know what is your favorite racing game and what is your favorite re-implementation of an older game that became something entirely new in and of itself. Put it in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting. Thanks for being such an awesome community. You know that I've been Jack for the Cardboard Herald.